All right, guys, I apologize, but it's finally here. What are you looking for? Gaming on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. All the Note 22 Ultra, whatever you want to call it. But yes, if you join us for the very first time, we do a lot of gaming videos on this channel. And this time we're checking out the S22 Ultra, going over a ton of things about the device. Now, again, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, notification icon, and I also want to give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Spigen. You guys know I've been using them for a while. They've got a brand new case right here, which we'll be talking about later on in this video. And of course, they do offer lots of cool chargers that you can definitely use for S22 Ultra because Samsung doesn't provide one. All right. So the S22 Ultra is here. It's a beast. It's got a massive display, 6.8 inches, absolutely gorgeous, super AMOLED 2X display. Not sure why they call it that. But I like the fact that, look, this display is super responsive, 120 hertz refresh rate, very fast, very responsive, and it's something that you can play at, of course, the highest resolution at 120 hertz. So I'm doing that in this gameplay video and in terms of the full performance. Now, this is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, the version in the US. Now, if you're in the UK and certain parts of the world, you will be getting the Exynos 2200, which I don't have yet, but trust me guys, once I get it in, I will be doing a gaming comparison between the two C performance. But some of you are going, okay, what about benchmarks? Again, I don't care about benchmarks, but here you go. Here's your CPU bench, sorry, here's your compute benchmark scores. Uh, open CL score 5,873. You can see how it compares to Exynos from last year. It is actually slightly behind. Then if you go into CPU scores, you can see it's 1,216 um, single core, multi core 3,429. Better than Exynos last year, better than Exynos again for multi core last year. So for benchmark guys, that is what you get. But look, I'm here to talk about gaming and gaming performance. And we're gonna be checking out a ton of games here. So you can see the games we'll be playing throughout this whole session. And honestly, uh, I have to say that the gaming experience was really fluid and smooth. I liked what I got from the gaming experience altogether. But I'll, I will say this, and I'm gonna put it out there right, right now. Temperatures ran a little higher than I expected, which actually brings me to, of course, the speaking case I was talking about. This is the Cryo Armor case. Now, why I like this case, why it actually played a lot with the temperatures, which we'll be talking about, is the fact that this has a mixture of silicon and graphite, so it allows to just help cool the device a little better. But it's not just that. You can see the design here at the back. You can see those blue colors. Now, they've got vents to allow heat dissipation much better, so your device doesn't run warm, especially if you have a case, because we all have cases on our devices. Uh, but I like the fact that it actually ran just a little bit cooler to allow me to enjoy my gameplay sessions a little bit better. This is an awesome case, resource of $21.99, definitely check out. And also, <laughs> You, <laughs> this is also something that is very needed because those temperatures went up to 106 degrees. Now, that might, might not be too bad because some other devices have run definitely warmer and it is cooler from last year, but it was something that I noticed. Now, this didn't happen with every single game and I'll mention the games that actually ran those temperatures too. So the very first game is Call of Duty Mobile. And uh, we, of course, played it a couple of times. I use GameBench Pro to measure the benchmarks. And as you can see, I've got three gaming sessions here, all 60 FPS in terms of frame rates. Go back to the next one, you can see and you can see. Now, in terms of uh, RAM usage, we use about 1,034 uh, megabits of RAM and GPU is about 37. Frame rates was uh, 59 uh, frames per second in this situation at 89% of the time, but for the rest, it was 60 uh, FPS for 100% of the time. So it ran Call of Duty Mobile very well. Now, let's go over to another game somebody asked for. This is actually called Critical Ops. Now, I do like this game, it's actually fun to play. Uh, and in terms of the benchmarks, it actually did pretty well. Uh, it did about um, 60 frames per second, steady, no issues whatsoever. Um, although it's not here on this tool, you can see it here on screen that it ran those, uh, those benchmarks very, very well. This is an awesome game to play. Honestly, uh, thanks for actually the, the heads up on that game. Now, you guys, of course, want to see PUBG Mobile. Now, somebody asked me to play PUBG Mobile with uh, uh, a GFX tool. I just didn't have enough time, guys. But PUBG Mobile, I did put in a ton of hours and a lot of sessions into the gameplay. And playing Smooth Extreme a couple of times here, 
Um, we started off with 58 frames per second, and then it kind of just improved and got better. We got 60 FPS as well. We got another 60 FPS session here, and you can see the RAM usage uh, 442, GPU 28. It's not really GPU intensive. You can see the RAM usage is still very similar across the board. Now, the one thing I did notice at Smooth Extreme is that the uh, FPS stayed at 60 frames per second for 100%, and your battery usage was about 26% per hour. Uh, and we'll get to the battery in a second there. Now, also playing an Ultra HD Ultra, 40 frames per second, as you would expect. RAM usage is also similar. GPU usage was much higher because of course it's more graphically intensive at this point. Same thing with just another session as well. You can see the GPU usage. And of course the battery increased in usage to 37% per hour. So which means you're gonna be using more battery juice if playing at smooth extreme, but still solid overall. So those games are handle pretty well. Before I get to Genshin Impact, I've got a couple other games to actually showcase. So we've got Lost, Lost Light. Now Lost Light was a fun game and it actually played, played really well. You can see it also had a higher GPU use at 57 frames per second. As you can see the graphics of this game, it looks pretty nice. You can see it's, it's a little more graphical intensive, CPU not so much. RAM is much higher at uh, 1,203 megabits uh, uh, usage of RAM and 60 frames per second, it used that for about 96% of the time. So that was actually pretty good. Our battery consumption was actually not decent at 24% per hour. So Lost Light, a fun game to actually check out right there. So let's get to the big hitters in terms of performance and performance usage. So there is Black Desert Mobile. Now this game here, I couldn't get the GPU or uh, RAM usage off it, but I was running about 43 frames a second at the maximum resolution for it. And I played for 22 minutes and four seconds, basically. Um, and the game is intense. There's a lot of particles on screen. It does a lot of stuff. So you can see the kind of performance you get from it. But I will say this though, that yes, even though it ran pretty well, um, I, I wanted to get to a stable frame rate, you know, of about hopefully 60, but it stayed at 45 and it was kind of locked between that 43 and 45 there. In terms of frame rate, set up 43 for 92% and the battery usage is about 24% uh, for uh, the hour or so of use. So that is actually Black Desert, a fun game to play and on one that uses a lot of, uh, of course, juice from the device, if you will. Now. Genshin Impact. Genshin was very, very interesting. So I couldn't actually record it off the device. So I connected it to my PC and I ran Genshin Impact. Now, you know how Genshin is. Using it at, of course, max settings, this game can be very, very intensive to play. And this is where we saw some very interesting numbers. I was getting 42 frames per second. I played for about 20 minutes in one of the gameplay sessions and I got 42 frames per second, which I was like, that's, that's not good. That's actually worse than last year. So I went back, took my uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra. Also, yeah, speaking case, but this is a device right here. I took my S21 Ultra and I played the same game as well. And I got similar results and I was going, okay, wh what's going on? So honestly, that is what I, would, I got for Genshin Impact on the S22 Ultra. It's a bit disappointing. I'm hoping because the device is now and it needs an update because my earlier numbers from last year with S21 Ultra were much higher in the 50s range. Uh, now I'm seeing things in the 40s, low 40s, which is not really good. So that is something that hopefully an update will fix because I think performance wise, it should be able to actually hit those marks. So when it comes to battery use and battery generation, now from the games we saw, it told us roughly around 24 to about 25% uh, percent battery loss within an hour, at least just what Game Bench Pro told us. But in my actual use case, I got closer to about 15 percent power, which is actually pretty good. Uh, it shows cases that this processor does a really good job at uh, just battery battery regulation, especially while gaming for a long period of time. I did play, I had a good session for about two hours and I saw about 15% per hour, uh, getting to about 30%. Sometimes it actually was even less, about maybe 28% of in terms of battery loss. So that's actually pretty good because as you know, the S22 Ultra doesn't come with a charger. And you know, if you need to charge your device, that's gonna be something that you definitely, if you're playing for long periods of time. And thankfully, 
As I mentioned earlier, Speaking does have a charger. This is the Speaking Power Arc charger. And uh, what I like about it, it's a 45 watt charger. It comes with braided cable. Um, and of course it's USB type C to each side. And it's a PD charger. It will support the fast charging you need on your Galaxy device. Uh, honestly, it's a lifesaver since there's just no more charges, especially with Samsung increasing the charging wattage, which you would think they will provide a charger for you. Anyway, you guys are probably asking, what about game streaming services? Yes, I did uh, test out Xbox Game Pass uh, and it played well. Now, as you would expect, it should. I did try it over 5G with T-Mobile and Verizon and it handled pretty well on both carrier networks with no issues whatsoever. Locked to 60 frames per second, so that's actually pretty consistent. I also used the GameStar X2 USB-C, which is a USB-C controller. Love that, works pretty well for it too. Also works well for uh, emulators. I actually played a Dreamcast emulator, played Marvel vs. Capcom, and that worked well. No issues as well. So if you're looking to play emulators on your S22 Ultra, you should have no issues with it. The processor can handle things pretty well. I think when you look at this device overall in terms of gaming features, it will handle almost everything. When I say almost everything, we saw that hiccup with Genshin Impact where it just didn't give us numbers that I expected to see. So hopefully that is something that has, that can be patched with a software um, update because of course this device is not available on the market yet. So that's something I'll put as a little caveat there. But overall, temperatures were in line to what I expected. And I think this is gonna be a device that a lot of people will love to use for their day-to-day -day gaming. Now, if you guys have any questions or any comments about some of the games, the accessories, or even the Spigen Cry Armor case, as well as they are, uh, the Spigen Power Arc charger, let me know. Definitely use the links down below to pick them up, as well as also your own Galaxy S22 Ultra or any uh, Galaxy S device. We do have links for you guys down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.